Hello my fellow creator, my name is Stancy and you are on a Stancy Nova channel, the best place for creative people who want to live better. Today's video is all about jewelry product photography at home with minimal equipment. I'll be talking about my recent project that I've done for Give Jewels. This is a multi-brand jewelry store in Prague. Here are some photos from this project and this time my client needed a good variety of shots. So I took some artistic still life photos, some creative product photos, as well as some photos with a model. I hope you will learn some tips today and have fun with me. Let's dive deep into that. But first, matcha. This is everything I'll need to make my matcha. And I use a little life hack. I do not have this like fancy whisk for matcha. I just use this protein shaker that works just fine. I'm a big fan of iced matcha latte and today I decided to do something a little bit different and mix coconut and almond vanilla milks together. I'm gonna put about one teaspoon of matcha about one teaspoon of sugar, vanilla milk, coconut milk, and shake. Okay, I'm tired and maybe that's enough. Ooh, just right. All right, now let's look at the photos one by one and I will be talking about the way I styled them and why I decided to do it that way. So this is the first picture I'm gonna show you and if I'm going to look that way, it's because it's opened on my laptop as well. So for this first one, I use a vase as a prop. I got this vase from a home decor shop. Before doing the shoot, I always go there and see if something inspires me. And as soon as I saw this vase with its beautiful color, texture and shape, I immediately thought of an idea to show a fun way of styling two different necklaces. And to have two products on a picture, I think they should look quite different to juxtapose each other. One necklace has a beetle, the chain is very tiny, the second chain is big and chunky and also geometric and intricate and interesting. And I think this is a great combination for this picture. If I would use another chain with, a very, with very small elements, it would not give the same effect. And I also used some magnolia flowers that I just got from a tree on a street. It was early spring when I was shooting this. So I used that to ground the vase on the backdrop and to make this picture asymmetrical. Symmetry is quite boring. Even though it's pleasant for our eyes, it's quite boring. I wanted to add this element of spontaneity. Spontane spontaneity. <laughs> spontaneity. Spontaneity. In the photo. I also feel like the beetle and flowers work together really, really well. Now let's move on to the second photo. Guys, this one. I am so happy about this one. I am so proud. I think this is very creative and it just catches this spring vibe, spring mood. Again, I'm using the flowers as a prop, but we've seen these pictures with flowers. They are all using flowers in the same way. I decided that I don't want to hide the turnips and I decided to reveal them, reveal the roots, reveal the soil, sprinkle some more soil at the bottom and this white rubber ear. This is just how Gib Jewels shows their tiny piercing earrings in the shop window. It looks very unnatural and I think this is again a great juxtaposition of the natural elements in this photo. Let's move on to the third picture. I had a lot of fun styling these silver rings with these silver threads. I saw this idea online and I wanted to do my take on it. I used silver threads because I wanted to keep it minimalistic 
airy and fresh. It took me a while to figure out how to do this, but then I found this picture frame at home and I decided to use that. I placed it on the table vertically, I taped it down and then I secured the threads with little pieces of tape on the sides where I wanted them to go. I started with just one ring, making sure that I'm happy with the lines and then I added the second one. I placed it in a little bit different way, like in a different dimension. I also made sure that all the lines in this picture are different. If there will be at least one line going in the same direction, it will look kind of boring and a little bit off. And then I placed the third ring, also making sure that it goes in a different dimension. I have another version with this picture with earrings and with just two rings, because I didn't want this picture to be overcrowded. And I also have a picture with just one ring on it. And my tip here would be to experiment with the position of props and products on your pictures. Try to make a few versions so that later you will be able to choose the best one. Try to turn the products in different directions. Try to remove some props, add some different props. I have here three final photos. How many times I changed the setup, you think? Nine. Basically, for each picture, I had three different versions. Moving on. Changing this setup a little bit, and my pants really stuck up my butt. And wearing this onesie is not helping. All right, now I'm ready to show you the best picture of this photo shoot. This one. A round of applause, please. I am so excited about this one. I'm very happy that I created this. It was accidental. It was a sunny day. The beams of light were coming through my balcony door on the floor. I had a background laying there. And then I also remembered that I had this glass. I just recently bought it. I wanted to see if I can integrate it into this photo shoot. And I decided to place it on the background like this. And it created this beautiful shadow that immediately gave me this water, swimming pool, summer, ocean and the beach vibe and I immediately thought about the sun necklace that I had. I placed it there and it was perfect. It was perfect. So yeah, I would highly suggest you to try integrating shadow play into your pictures. I think this is a great way to do something unique. You can use a bunch of things like flowers or branches or glasses for your pictures and experiment with it. Be playful and have fun. Also, the only source of light for this picture was the sun. The same is for this photo. I do not own a professional strobe light at home. When I need to create this harsh shadow, I rent a photo studio and I use a professional strobe there. I just have a couple of soft boxes at home, but they give soft light and soft shadow, which is not the vibe. This is something that's on trend and it's very accessible. You have the access to the sun. For this photo, I just wanted to show a variety of chains you can get at the Gib Jewels store. I think it's a lot of fun to mix and match different types of chains. Next was this picture. Again, I just used the sunlight to create this. I used products that are quite similar. They all have these black elements in their style and one of them has the biggest chain, so I decided to play with it. I held it in my hands while my camera was on a tripod on a tripod to take this picture. This is one of the artistic still life pictures I created for this shoot. This is a new style for me. I really wanted to create something in it and finally I got the chance. I think the main idea here is to let yourself be creative. Just immerse yourself into creative flow and try to experiment with different objects. They could be kind of random. Like you see this white brick over here? This is just a piece of styrofoam. Yeah, and for some reason it looks good. I just put more white paint on it so that it's uniform and one color because it was a bit dusty. I found it on a street. 
I actually made my boyfriends to jump over the fence to the construction site so that he could pick it up. <laughs> Thank you, Artem. Okay, getting back to this photo. I also used some flowers that I used in previous photos because I wanted to maintain the spring vibe throughout the whole project. And I made sure that the product, that the necklace is not overlapping with anything because everything around it must drive attention to it. All right, now I'm ready to show you my second artistic still life photo. It's this one. I think I've done a better job with this because I kept the size of all the props smaller and really tried to create this beautiful structure that looks almost impossible. And it wasn't possible because I used tape for everything to stay together but it looks like it's balancing on each other and again i integrated some flowers that i just found on the street some dry flowers that i had laying around in my home and these two rocks this is just some rose quartz that i found in some kebab in berlin i don't know why they just had rose quartz laying on the ground and i thought if i take a piece it wouldn't hurt nobody and then this is like a piece of lava from italy that my friend nastya brought to me from her trip <laughs> and finally i'm ready to show you some pictures i've done with a model in a studio i wanted to create something airy fresh minimal and I'm very grateful that Lisa was up to help me with this one. On this picture with the hand, we used a piece of fabric instead of a sleeve because we didn't have such an item of clothing that would have a very airy and lightweight sleeve. And we put very heavy and chunky and big gold chain bracelet over it so that it juxtaposes this feel and creates a very interesting look. When creating a close-up, every single detail matters. So I would recommend you to put the foundation and powder on all of the body parts that will be in the picture so that you have less work in the Photoshop later. Also, when editing and retouching pictures with skin, it is so important to keep the texture. Lisa has wonderful skin. I did not need to do much retouching at all, but there were still some details that I wanted to refine, just because when it's a photo with jewelry, I really want the focus to go on the product, not on the skin or on the model. Another important thing to consider when taking jewelry photos with a model is nails. Lisa had French manicure, but it wasn't on brand for Gip jewels. And instead of just not posting these pictures or not sending them, I decided to change the color of Lisa's nails. And I went from this to this. For me, it wasn't very difficult to do this, but it does take quite a lot of time. So if you want me to create a tutorial on how to change the color of nails in Photoshop so they match the overall aesthetic of the picture, just let me know in the comments down below. And I think I'm ready to wrap up this video, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed making this video, even though it was a little bit of a struggle because I lost all the footage. I lost all of my backstage footage from this photo shoot that I wanted to include. It just randomly got deleted from my hard drive and I couldn't recover it. Yeah. But anyways, I decided to persevere and create this video anyway for you because I think it was quite insightful. And if so, let me know. Let me know in the comments below which photo from this project you like the most. If you want to see the full project, go to my website stancinova.com where you will also see two previous projects that I've done for Gip Jewels and you can see how my style has evolved. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content about creativity, lifestyle design, product photography and content creation. And follow me on Instagram for more backstage footage and more insights into my life. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace!